What's going on guys, it's your average consumer and it's Apple TV day, you guys. So we've got the brand new Apple TV 4K over here and we've got some upgrades, some changes. Today we're gonna talk all about it. But first, let's see what's inside the box. Ah, I did it. Oh, it looks smaller. So Apple was able to reduce the volume of this by 20%. It has a fanless design now, so the thermals are all internal. They don't need a fan, so it reduced the size. This is quite a bit smaller. I'm actually surprised by this. Uh, but this is the Apple TV 4K. And let's see what else we got in the box. So over here, we also have the new Siri remote. I think this is the third generation of it. And this one now has USB-C. So we've got that in there. And we've got our power cable. Some paperwork, of course, warranty information, and it has USB-C USB -C in C here. C -C. That's it. You don't get a charging cable for the remote. If you've got a USB-C cable though, you should be able to charge it, but it's not in the box. Now let's take a quick look around this. Now, of course, we do have the sticker around the Apple TV. I always feel crazy for taking this off because of how glossy it is. You know, you get those fingerprints on here, but you got to, so you can have access to the back. So of course we have our power port, ethernet, and HDMI. Now this is the Wi-Fi ethernet model, so you have the included ethernet port, but there's a Wi-Fi only model, uh, which is $20 less, but you get half the storage, you don't get the ethernet port, and you also don't get thread support, which is for smart homes. We'll talk about that a little bit later, I think this is the way to go. This is 150 bucks versus 130 bucks. And we also have this guy in the bottom. And here it is. This is our Apple TV 4K. I am genuinely surprised at how small this is. Now, obviously this is a similar, but smaller design. Let's talk about what else is new here. This is now packing the A15 Bionic processor, which is a pretty huge jump compared to the, I believe, A12 that was in the previous generation. So that means you're going to have better performance while gaming, navigating through the menus, just the UI, everything is just going to feel quite a bit snappier. It's a pretty significant upgrade, so this should be a much smoother experience. Now, when it comes to plugging this thing in and watching content, you of course have that HDR support. Uh, we've seen Dolby Vision on this in the past, but now it also supports HDR 10 plus. This will now cover all the bases. Now, regardless of which model you go for, uh, you'll get that 4K, so there's no longer that Apple TV HD. Now you've got Apple TV 4K for the cheaper or the more expensive model. Now, speaking about the cheaper model, like I said, you get half the storage there. That one will start at 64 gigs, and this one is 128. That is an increase compared to the previous generation, which was, I believe, 32 gigs and 64. Now, I'm not somebody who throws a ton of apps on their Apple TV, but if you primarily use this thing as your gaming device of choice at home, uh, you can add a lot more games now with the increased storage. And of course, if you can dedicate an ethernet port to your Apple TV, you'll get that better streaming quality there. But one really big change is thread support. Uh, but you won't find it on the cheaper model, you'll only find it on the $150 model. And for me, I think it's worth going for it with that alone. So if you have even the slightest intention of creating a smart home or you wanna use some smart devices, you're absolutely going to want something with thread support. To explain it for all the average consumers out there, what thread support does is it basically extends that Wi-Fi coverage across your smart devices. So let's say you had, I don't know, a light bulb that didn't exactly get the best Wi-Fi signal uh, because of where it was placed. If it supports thread and you have something like this in between like your router and the bulb, it's going to make it a little bit easier for your light bulb to stay connected to the Wi-Fi uh, because they're all attached by these threads. Extender? It's kind of like, it's like an extender. It's like, kind of like having a Wi-Fi extender for your smart devices. Okay. All built right into it. Does it have to be uh, like Apple Home kit? No, no, no. So, Thread is basically the new Wi-Fi standard. Uh, it, it's going to be like that new standard, and it works across Apple, Google, Alexa, or any, Amazon. Any home case, most yeah, case. yeah. Okay. It, pretty much most of them, for sure. It's definitely going to be the future. 
So you might as well get something that supports it. So that's what we got here in a nutshell, but there are some new features on the series side of things. And let's jump into those. Oh, episode four is out? Hell yeah. All right guys, so now we've got the Apple TV 4K all set up. Got it on our TV. I gotta say, so far using it, it's really snappy. So it's kind of what you would expect with an A15 powering it. Oh, got the whole family here. If you got your family set up on your account, you can see them all listed right here. But yeah, this is pretty much the control center for the Apple TV. You can pick what user you are. You can connect different audio devices. So if you have AirPods or something and you wanna watch quietly, you can throw your AirPods in. It'll show up right here on the list. Like, let me show you. Just grab your AirPods throw them in, they show up immediately on the list. It also detects that my AirPods are nearby. So that's cool. It gives you a nice, easy place to access your uh, your audio output. And uh, we also have your gaming controller over here. Uh, we've got the Xbox controller set up. So this is what we'd use to play any games on the Apple TV. Now, I do wanna see how games run on the Apple TV. I haven't tried this yet. So let's actually jump into a game and see if that processor really makes it a smooth experience. Do I do Sonic? Sonic. But this Fallen Night thing looks kind of cool. Sonic. All right, all right, fine. <laughs> Break my arm, why don't you guys? <laughs> it jumped into this really quick. Ooh, I boosted, let's go. This is like bumper cars right now, I'm terrible. You know, in these games, they kind of purposely let you win. Like yeah, it's a computer. So uh, let it. But that was smooth. Playing, like jumping right into the game, playing it, didn't see any frames drop or anything. It just looked and felt really smooth. And I'm gonna go see, I'm, I don't care what you guys say. I'm gonna go see what that Fallen Night game is like. All right, so just real quick, I just wanna see what this is like. This play, this play is just like Mega Man. Even this feels smooth. Doesn't feel like a, a janky experience. Like, you know, when certain like, yeah. I wouldn't want to play games on, Some I don't know. TV. Yeah. Like, this is like lag experience. Yeah, it's just, or, or there's like really low level games. Like I, I'd introduce Austin to gaming with this, with no problem. Is that a little robot man? It's like a robot knight. He's got a sword and he has a cape, you know, knight in shining armor. But it also looks like a robot. Oh, and I died. All right, that's enough. <laughs> now, one of the new features, I can't show you just yet, but it's actually going to be voice recognition. So if you were to pick up your Apple TV remote and you ask Siri, what should I watch? It'll pop up and then it'll just show you your recommendations. Uh, but based on who's picking it up, once it has that voice recognition, uh, it'll be able to play based on your personal preference, things that it will switch over to your profile and things that you like to watch. It might give you suggestions based on your own activity. And now you can see on the right side, this is where you get all of your Siri results. Before they used to be at the bottom, but now they come in on the right and they take up less real estate on the screen. See me, I'm getting anime, that makes sense for me. But yeah, that feature is coming later this year. Now there's this universal search feature that Siri will show you options from all kinds of apps. So you're not hopping in and out of all of them. You can just say something like, show me anime. Okay. We got some uh, very top tier suggestions over here. But what's nice about this is these are not all coming from the same app. So Bleach is what? Hulu. Can I go back to that list? Yes, I can. Spy Family is also Hulu. One Piece is also Hulu. Uh, Chainsaw Man, <laughs> you guessed it. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, <laughs> Jujutsu Kaisen, that's Funimation. So uh, when did Hulu get all these animes though? That's my question. That's Hulu too? Yeah, listen, Jay, these are all Hulu right now. Okay, they got some Crunchyroll in there. Let me log into Funimation really quick. That's one thing I do like about this whole system and the, e the whole ecosystem aspect of the Apple TV is I could just log in with my phone without having to do the whole typing thing. But yeah, it gives you those suggestions really quickly, then it jumps into the apps. You can start watching. Pretty smooth. All right, so I got a couple of suggestions over here on things I should try. Play some reggae. I'm trying to just vibe out. Play some Bob Marley. Everybody knows this. Play Bleach. Let's see if it, I'm gonna throw a curveball at it. 
Okay, they even got bleach music. That's kind of wild. Oh, and then all these options show up. Hey, 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 this is all gonna copyright coming for the monetization over here. What's the leather in Shibuya? Where is Shibuya? Tokyo. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, it's got Japan on the mind. That's where the curry spot is right there. <laughs> what was the score on the last Lakers game? Now, what else is coming to Siri is that it's going to be supported in 30 countries. So it's going to be available in a lot of different places. You get those different languages. I'll have it linked down below. So you can check it to see if it's coming to your country soon. I always felt like Apple TV kind of did a good job of recommending shows across all apps based on your taste. So I do think the search functionality part of that is pretty cool. Um, but overall, it feels like a pretty similar Apple TV experience uh, to what we've seen before but just like with a few more bells and whistles here and there. But all right, that about wraps it up for this video, guys. Let me know what you think of the new Apple TV. Is this something you're gonna go run and grab? I think for 150 bucks, it's a pretty good price with a really fluid operating system and access to a lot of cool things from like the game side of things. I think it's the best platform I've seen games on from a smart TV perspective uh, so far. Uh, but that about wraps it up. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, be the cool guy or girl that gives this video a thumbs up. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, it's your average consumer. Peace. All right, fellas. Chainsaw Man time. Let's do it.